Good morning, dear Holy Cross. This just isn't the same seeing your smiling faces, but your greetings keep them going, not only to me, but to everybody else, for they are seen and your beautiful profile pics are as well. It is still Easter, you can see from our cross and pyramids, the beautiful light and our organ. Our worship this morning is being led by Julie on the organ and Nancy singing. And yours truly, and hopefully this is a reminder in the midst of all that's going on, that some of God's best work, and I would argue God's best work, full stop, happens when the world is the darkest, when the world is struggling, watch. God's best work is at hand. For Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. all the time spent at home there are plenty of practical jokes going on and a lot of hide and seek with the girls and sometimes we end up playing down in the basement where it's a bit darker 
And we talk about sometimes don't tell their mom the boogeyman. <laughs> And we end up talking about ghosts. And the other day, Sylvie said, Ah, Papa, I don't believe in ghosts. They're just our ancestors. They are our ancestors that are looking over us and taking care of us. I like that thought. Our ancestors with us. In their spirit, those who have gone before us, but also we have the word that supported them from generation to generation. And the story now this morning will be of the upper room. How are we connected in this moment in our lives? How are we connected to our ancestors? How are we connected to their and our holy words? How are we connected, as we will hear, to the disciple Thomas? This season, this moment, this second Sunday of Easter, how are we connected, especially during this time of virus? This week, we will walk through a blessing for Thomas. And this blessing isn't for Thomas, it is for you. And it's for me, because I need it. This blessing is written by my friend and colleague, Pastor Maida Herrick Carlson. And it's for those who need to see to believe. In this time of uncertainty, I'm constantly looking for the flattening of the curve. Some glimpses of hope that sure, we may not ever go back to how things were, that normalcy, but just some inkling of a normal routine. This blessing is for me and all those who need to see to believe like Thomas. Not because their faith is weak. My faith is not weak. For it's the spirit alone that was in me and in me now that was gifted at the font, that baptismal font, and resealed every time I took communion. And this is your story as well. Our faith is not weak, but sometimes we need to see to believe like Thomas. Because we may feel dismembered by this virus, COVID-19, and all the situation that comes with it. And we know we can't bear it alone. So we do it together and we're doing mighty fine as we go along. Now, once again, lifted up, resealed by the promises of our baptism, we hear it in the words of the gospel. <laughs> Unless I see the mark 
of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet they have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So there is a locked room. Disciples, they are in it. They're afraid. And guess who's not there? Thomas. After all Jesus had been through, it's amazing. Jesus shows up. There he is. And he says those four powerful words. Peace be with you. My friends, my followers, peace be with you. Holy Cross, peace be with you. Noah, peace. Settle your heart. So I have a shoelace here. And full disclosure, it's always good to be a bit vulnerable, especially in a position as pastor because I don't have it all together, and there have been hiccups in my life as well, and one of them is I always struggled to learn how to tie shoes. I was even taken out of kindergarten class to go try and learn on my own with one-on-one. -on -one. I just didn't understand it. The loop, you know, and loop around, and then so I just couldn't get it, so we went to two bunny loops, right? And then we just crossed them, and I have been doing that every day since for 37 years. But my 37th year, I decided, all right, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I gotta get the loop and then loop around and come through. I'm not gonna do it live though. <laughs> I decided I needed to do that because I was learning all these sorts of knots for sailing. And one of them is the hunter bow knot. And it reminds me of my own life when I was messing up and not understanding how to tie shoes, all the knots that occur. But we have knots in life as well. These times, our stomachs might feel like they are in knots with all the stuff that is running through our heads. Like, I'm concerned and worried about my, my parents and all my friends that I'm not seeing right now. I ask that on a daily basis. Sylvie, Esme, do you miss your friends? And they say, sure we do. But through technology, they can stay connected with their classroom. And I love that we can stay connected too, as well through this. You know, we haven't seen them. We haven't seen our loved ones. Sure, FaceTime helps or whatnot, but if that technology is not available, and even if it is, we still worry about our loved ones. And our stomach can feel like it's in knots. We cross above, come around, and pull through. So it kind of looks like shoes that are being tied. And then you come through.
and then there's a knot and it's really struggling and we don't know where to turn or where to go but just like our ancestors we go to the word and we as a church will will support you by the powerful presence of Christ in sacrament as well and sometimes people in the household are pulling and and there are so many expectations that are other because the world is still going around even though we have these social distancing and all of it's taking its course and then boom <laughs> Look at that. that is actually the first time I got it to work just for you God takes care of those knots by listening to them they'll always be there and we're truthful about it but God's powerful presence in Christ will eventually straighten things out for us. Peace in the midst of all the knots. Peace be with you. For our ancestors, the communion of saints, it's Easter. And they and you and me, we are alive and well. Perhaps we are rediscovering what worship is and what it's experienced in this moment. And we're discerning how we share the sacraments as church from a distance. How to really connect and care for one another who are quarantined. It helps that we aren't new to this. We have stories from Acts and the Epistles. We believe in the God who was, who is, and who is to come. For you and me and for all the Thomases. We celebrate Jesus begotten from the beginning in human flesh on earth and seated forever on the throne. The cast of characters stretches just as far and every week I am blessed by a few who remind me we do not bear these things all alone and that includes you. knock on the door at our house, we are well on our way moving forward, ambling on with Anders. I invite you to take a look at Caring Bridge and follow his latest with him and, and the whole family. And then you can also purchase uh, shirts as we, as a community, 
as citywide and beyond, regionally and across the country, raise money for the effort. Ambling for, Amble for Anders. I am so pleased that I got my shirt on my, my porch and right away Abby and I put them on and they are super comfortable. And every time I see it or do anything active, I think about all the walks that he and his family are going on right now. Outdoors is really who they are. And so we continue to uh, walk with you, Anders, and I will uh, don that shirt as much as I can. And when we do so, uh, collectively, we all continue to pray for you and your recovery. In this moment, go ahead and share if there are those around you, any other prayers? The sun is shining. Before you know it, we will see green grass. Perfect time to be outside and cutting some wood. I'm a bit sore after chopping up some in our backyard. It's a beautiful time. As we now transition into seasons. All my family down in the Twin Cities continue to ask, is there still snow in the yard? And I say, yep, we still have snow. For you, for me, for Anders, for Roger, for Alice, all those at St. Anne's, down in downtown Duluth there, for Thomas, a blessing across the ages for you and me. For Thomas, they won't stop talking, remembering, celebrating what they have seen. The grand miracle I missed. We're all on lockdown, but I alone am lonely. They are one uh, living body and too much to bear. So I do not bear it at all. Sometimes we feel like that. Like we just can't carry it. We can't, we can't bear it on our own. And so we do it. We carry for a while. It reminds me of being in the Boundary Waters and doing all the portages that are to come this summer. And sometimes we just can't make it and we have to switch up. And some folks will be on canoe and some people will be on packs. And when folks are struggling, we rise up and we help carry. This is who and whose we are. Our mission is strong. It's very clear and it is spiritual care. We will be there for folks as they wrestle with their spirit and strength. We're glad you're with you. You're with us and we're with you. We had a tremendous uh, support last week through our online giving and I invite you to do that again. We can do it through Simply Giving, but if you're not signed up for that, just go to our website, holycrossduluth.org slash give and give generously with Abby and I. For Thomas, out of faithful solitude and sore defiance, I announce what I need to mend and live, my eyes on his wounds, my hands in his side. It is a single breath and a lifetime but then he appears reaching for me. He appears reaching for me. For Thomas, I see his wounds, our tender stories tangled together. Aren't our stories beautifully tangled together, affirming my quiet and achy hope? His suffering contains mine, his body remembers and remembers my whole life. And still I touch them to feel what I already know is true. Still love.
Holy Cross, there is no bearing it alone, though we may try. For now, Thomas's story and ours is written in the hands and the side of the one who bears all things, the one who lives. God be with you until we meet again. When you're feeling like, ah, oh, I need some help or you're down, please call the church office at any time. Go ahead and pray the Lord's Prayer. And I'm not a doctor, but I always prescribe going on a walk, even if it's just half a block or a quarter of a block. I am now announcing today that I will be walking the complete superior hiking trail from the J. Cook area all the way up north. It is 300 miles, but I have even more exciting news. I will be walking it with you. <laughs> so, this is going to be a virtual walk. You will keep track of that quarter of a block, even that walk down the hallway. Keep track of your steps and we can compute them to mileage. You happen to do a mile, we know that that is good. Even just getting outside is good for the spirit. And after each week on a Friday, we will report to the office our mileage and we will see how far we get together on the beautiful Superior hiking trail. But in the meantime, God, be with you until we meet again. The girls and I and Abby are singing this in our living room and every time we do, I think of you, dear Holy Cross. Hold fast. <laughs>